Hi there, everyone. I made a video this morning and decided I would redo it. There was lots going on and it still sounds like there might be lots going on. It's Debbie Hazelton. I have not, I put videos up here of some speaking engagements that I've had at the local metaphysical New Thought Church, but I thought that, and I hope that this camera is, I hope I'm centered on it for you. Um, anyway, I've not been speaking directly to you and I so appreciate all of you who are subscribers and those of you who visit and I, I just uh, love having this platform and an opportunity to share. So there are several things that have been happening and on my mind that I've wanted to come in here and share. Um, I very much appreciate the opportunities I've had on Shane's channel on Biased and on the Fence. And those of you who came from uh, hearing me on his shows. Um, some of you may not know, but I have radio shows out there and I'm, I'm still kind of in the process of deciding whether, how I'm going to juggle some of this. Because for years I had podcasts, uh, different ones and different other radio shows. I've really been doing a lot of that since 2004. Um, some of you may even know that I was on the, the motivation station that WNN, <clears throat> excuse me, WNN had back in the early 90s. I had three different features, uh, groups of featured series, and was syndicated at that time um, on nine different stations. Some of them were on six times a day. So that was really my first radio with my own um, creativity. And, and that was right at the point where I came out with my first book. I had two books and they're out of print, but you may still find them out there. Um, the first is The Courage to See. It's a daily affirmations book. The second is a workbook called Solving the Self-Esteem Puzzle, a guide for moving from peace, P-I-E-C-E -E, to P-E-A-C-E. Oh yeah, I think that's what we all are wanting and, and needing. And so I've been doing talk shows as well, uh, a lot through ACB Radio. ACB Radio is a project of acb.org, the American Council of the Blind. Um, but I also have music shows there. The Good Energy Mix is in its 11th year. And In the Quiet, a more spiritually based meditative kind of show, is in its sixth year. And that particular one is on 10 stations now. So the best way to know about them, there are three different ways. Uh, you can be on my announce list, announce-request at Debbie hazelton.com. You can find me on Twitter at Debbie Hazelton or on Facebook, facebook.com slash I am, let's see, I am Deb M H. So that's I A M D E B M H. Okay. So I have been, I wake up almost every morning downloading um, and just really I've been spending a lot of time getting clear, getting acclimated to what feels like a new space. I feel really very much like I've had a reset this year and I've been in the process of it for the last several years. Like I have said, some of you heard me tell some of my story in 2011, I had a huge awakening. I've been in this metaphysical new thought, mental health, really since the 60s. Um, <laughs> um, I'd like to say I started in my crib, but no, not really. Um, I would say uh, seventh grade was really pivotal. That's when I really began to interact and talk about and think about even more. And well, I 
actually thought a lot about spiritual things even a lot earlier. But anyway, um, it's been an ongoing process with a with the most um, serious, congruent kinds of experiences since 2011. And um, but in this last year, I feel like many many things have come together. And I look back on so much of who I was over many, many years, things I did, things I said, things I didn't do, didn't say, and I feel so much like I'm a different person. I'm not that person. And I really think that this is happening for a lot of us. And I want to very much encourage that this is part of what we can go through in becoming more conscious, in, in, in embracing more consciousness and all of the good that comes with that. And, and I think that's really what is happening as some of us recall, whether it's past lives, um, other lives, other timelines, and I often refer to previous incarnations in this life. <laughs> I mean, you know, but with that, and I prefer to say and rather than but, with that, I want to encourage that I think there are new rules that are going with the new kinds of experiences that many of us are having. And I think some of the new rules are things like get used to knowing that what you think about is what will be manifested, what will be. And the more you think about I don't have and I want, I want, I, I, the more it will be that sense of lack. So really, yeah, you know, I hear some people complaining about people who are saying they're feeling good. And um, do I go through stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And there are times that I'm screaming at my computer or I'm screaming at the TV or it'll come out somewhere. It does. I have my moments. I have my moments of fear. I had some last night. Worked with it. And so I think we do have new rules. I think uh, one of those is about how we handle our quote, negativity, or how we handle the things that bother us, and, and ways to address things that we need to address that really are respectful of others and respectful of ourselves, and that if we're not used to it and we're having trouble with it, we can ask for help, ask our angels, ask our guides, and we can also even ask other people for help with it. And we can allow ourselves to receive it, allow ourselves to get better. I, I hear some people saying the same limitations that they've said for many, many years. And, you know, it's like, why are you arguing for those limitations? This is the time to become more free of those. Another uh, rule or um, way of doing things differently that I think is very important is to know that what is in the past is in the past. And the more that we become unattached, and I don't mean coldly neutral or coldly detached, but the more we know that we're not any longer that, we're not any longer behaving in the same old ways or, or you know, seeing things in the same old ways. The more that we don't keep on going on about that and those, the more we can move forward. And as we move forward and we don't cling on to and think we have to keep taking ownership of old things, the more the, that I think those old things just move on. It's old energy and it moves out because it's not meant for our frequency now. So one way of being able to do that 
I think, is in not expecting others to constantly go on about what they did wrong and not expecting ourselves to go on about what we've done wrong. Um, I, forgive me for even mentioning anything that sounds remotely political, but the other night, Leslie Stahl was on 60 Minutes with President Trump and she asked if something was a mistake. And he said, uh, she said, uh, I think he said, yes, it was. Um, or she said, well, you have made mistakes. And he said, well, everybody makes mistakes. And she said, what have been some of yours? I think that sometimes we want to know that others have made mistakes because we want to feel more okay. But I think that's old child play. Because if we think of mistakes as what I've often referred to as the photographer taking lots of mistakes, it's sort of like the, the rough drafts, the scrap paper, the mistakes. Why would we want to measure our worth by looking through the mistakes of others. If we think that we need to know about others' mistakes in order to have our own sense of worth, if we think we need to add them up and take score and feel some sort of retribution, then I don't think that says very much for our spirituality, for our our adult behavior. So, you know, Jesus said, put away childish things. Somewhere he said that. And um, I think it's great to be childlike. And my favorite way to do childlike or to be childlike is in wonderment. I, I become fascinated. Every time I hear my dog bark, I think, who decided the dog should say woof? And who put the wag in the dog's tail? And who decided how that cat should purr? And, and then I go further and I think, isn't it incredible that we all each wake up every day and we are this person and we have these other persons, peoples, all around us and all this other life of our pets or our flowers or our sunshine. And it's remarkable to me to just behold the very life of each and any and all of that and all of us and each of us bringing our gifts our personalities, our talents, each of us also bringing our, the awareness of where we don't choose to show up or can't show up. And then I think about, isn't it incredible how we come in to this life and however we go about doing it, we have to figure out who we are and what it means to be alive and in the world. And we have to figure out what does it mean to feel safe? Who is safe? Who has boundaries? How do I get rights? How do I deal with not having rights? How do I deal with not having boundaries? All of those things. And most of the time, we figure it out as we watch and listen to other people. We hear what they tell us. And much of it is figured out within silence and within our own being and, and or by reading and watching TV, God forbid. But yeah, there's a lot of that. But I think it's important to give ourselves credit and to give others credit for what all of us have been through and for what we have figured out 
and or not figured out and to know that that's okay we are spiritual beings here having a human experience and wow <laughs> much of that is so not easy it does get easier i think it has gotten easier uh with with uh time and and these other new ways of of feeling like there's been a reset and so I think that it's very important not to dwell so much on the past. Do you think that when there is any kind of, if you want to call it an ascension, or I'm tired of these buzzwords, but as we progress, do you think that our noses are going to be rubbed into the past? I don't. And I personally, am not interested. I don't care. I know about all these indictments. I'm not interested in all and sitting by and watching all these people being arrested. What I want is for the bad behavior to stop. That's what I want. I just want those behaviors to go away. And I think they will as we choose to not focus on them so much. I think they will. And I think that there are many powers at work behind the scenes doing the good works of, of helping all of this to shift. And so in asking about others' mistakes, I think it's, it's a lower vibration. And I also think going on and on about others' mistakes is a low vibration. I, I get about the Me Too, and all of that, and believe me, I have had my share of growing up and feeling violated. I grew up in an alcoholic household. I was blind since birth. I've got, you know, all kinds of stuff I can say about all of that. And I've had lots of other things that happened to me since where I was violated. And I think that some of it was ways I acted out and invited certain things, but I'm not here to say that I think that everything that happens to people is invited. Uh, no way. I think there are many things that happen to people that are not invited. Though going on and on and allowing that to be the script, the order of the day, the t-shirt or the sweatshirt message only keeps any of us who do that stuck where we are. It doesn't help us go forward, any of us. And it doesn't add to freedom, and it really doesn't do anything necessarily to the people who have done it. It doesn't, I mean, you know, there are things that, yes, people lose sleep over things they wish they hadn't done, and, and sometimes we need to say things and do things to make it right. But I think the way to make it right more of the time is to go forward to keep on going forward and do what we can to treat others more kindly, consciously, and to make better choices, discernment. Now, one of the things that I think is often missing when I hear people talk about forgiveness, people often talk about the importance of releasing. And I think that's very, very true. You know, it, it is about releasing, it's not about, um, giving people, uh, playing referee and, and letting them off the hook. You know, I heard a nun once say, it's up to us to forgive ourselves and up to God to forgive everyone else. But, and, <laughs> I think there's another piece that's very important about forgiveness, and that's the piece of empathy. Every time I forgive Every time I see the behavior of another and I look within me and I see something that's similar that I've done or, or said or not even differently, uh, I get an opportunity to have empathy for them and for me. And as I look at my own behavior, I have more empathy for others. Empathy to me is one of the most healing qualities that we can give others and we can in turn have more compassion for them and for us. 
we may not ever fully understand why others have done some of what they've done. We may not ever fully know what to make of it. But if, we, if we're trying to understand it with a rational mind, I don't think that's where it's at. I think it's about giving room for just the human experience that we're all dealing with and finding that empathy within our hearts. This is a heart experience. You know, it's interesting in the word heart is the word ear. How do we hear inwardly beyond that referee that wants to judge, beyond the analytical, beyond the critical? How do we hear and how do we have more compassion for ourselves and for others? I think that is so much about what is needed now and what is important to be doing now. So a lot of times when I'm not on here sharing, and I'm also even getting tired of watching YouTube videos, which I think is a little bit healthy, quite honestly, I think it's about holding space and having compassion, holding space. And again, every day, learning new ways to respond. Some of you have heard me talk about Fritz Perls talked about responsibility as response ability, the ability to respond. We are learning, I believe, collectively and individually about new ways to respond, to have new ability to respond differently. So I'm very excited about all of this. I have a lot more I could say, but I think this is probably long enough. And I, um, I just want to, well, one other line that has come to me frequently lately is, when you have extra, put love in the bank. Put love awareness, love consciousness in the bank. Because there are times that those, those, Forgiveness kinds of things are tall orders and whoa, you know, I've often thought of forgiveness as like a very big pill, like an antibiotic, you know, some of those big antibiotics that have a awful aftertaste and, and forgiveness is kind of like, oh, I don't want to swallow that awful pill. And yet, forgiveness is not a favor but it is a freedom. And I don't believe in pushing people to do it. Pushing people to do it is like telling somebody to eat liver. If you don't like liver, chances are you'll gag. But if you know that it has helped to forgive, if you know that you've benefited from it, then maybe pick up some of that feeling of having benefited and put it into another situation where it's harder and see if some of that feeling spills over. I really think we're in a magical time. I really believe in many ways we already have shifted into another dimension, but I don't think it matters what we call it. Personally, I don't think a lot of things matter what we call it. Like I said, I'm, more, I'm a little tired of some of the jargon and the people whining and wanting to go home. And, you know, to me, that's not spiritual. That's just not about uh, coming from a spiritual place. It's coming, that sounds to me, feels to me like coming more from a, um, sometimes a little child place. And yet, I do understand being tired. I do understand feeling worn out, feeling overwhelmed sometimes. Yes. And um, Bach flower remedies are here. Um, emotional freedom technique. I'm great at both if you want my help. I, am, um, I, I have taken the BQH, Beyond Quantum Healing Training. Haven't done much with it yet, but I am thinking about it a lot, very excited with some of what I'm thinking about with it. I, I, in a nutshell, I think, I think that we are in trance much of the time. 
and if not all of the time, most of the time. And I think that the challenge or the gift or the goal of BQH is to help more people move into a space to direct the energy of being in trance so that, or in a state, so that more things can be learned and experienced. And so I think there are some ways to discover yet about doing that that are uh, perhaps maybe not out there yet things I'm thinking about, so we'll see. But anyway, I love love the course. It really reminds me of uh, the outfit of Universal Brotherhood where I got my ministry, my ordination back in uh, 91. And um, so anyway, you know how to reach me. I believe I said it at the beginning. Uh, would love to um, just know that if you don't like what I'm saying here, um, take what you like and leave the rest. It's not about making sure that everyone is agreeing about everything. Okay, so let's see if I can, here we go, stop. Thank you so much, many, many blessings, and I'll be back sooner than, than it's taken me to get here. <laughs> All right, blessings and love. Thank you so much. All the best.